Hi, everybody. This is part two of my um, videos on the army, the well-funded, well-organized, intricate army behind the school boards all across the nation, why parents are finding it very difficult to fight against this critical race theory. And it's not just that that's happening in, in our schools, but it's also the uh, sexually explicit teaching that is taking place, even in kindergarten. Now, anyone of sound mind, an adult of sound mind, would understand that the materials that are uh, included in our public school curriculum is not not only not appropriate, but it, it has no place in our schools. Okay. Oh, arguing the obvious. But here, UNICEF report says, pornography is not always harmful to children. When you see this, you have to, you have to get that, all right, something's going on here. Yeah, maybe the world doesn't operate the way I thought it does. Maybe I don't, maybe something global is happening because our public schools and private schools and universities and colleges, uh, well, Australia, UK, they seem to be heading in the same direction. That seems a little odd, right? Okay. UNICEF. Yeah. United Nations, if you don't know how evil that organization is, check it out. Okay, UN agency is again immersed in controversy for a recent report suggesting there is no conclusive evidence that children exposed to pornography are harmed. And there is. The lying is so outrageous. The lying is beyond comprehension. Porn fighters disagree with the UNICEF data. UNICEF, this is a quote, UNICEF's report ignores the vast body of research demonstrating the harms of pornography to children. By ignoring the real harms pornography can have, UNICEF is playing roulette, Russian roulette, with children's health and safety. And this is Lisa Thompson, vice president and director of the Research Institute at the National Center on Sexual Exploitation. Yes, I absolutely agree. There are many in positions of power who are satanic. Yeah, they actually practice Satanism. And to those who might roll their eyes when they hear that, I was like you once, but I had to open my mind and do some research. In fact, it's true. So what's happening with this sexually explicit material in our schools? Well, back to Loudoun County. Listen to now th these parents who are reading from materials that have been handed to their children to read, to read, in school. Ready? I came home early from babysitting and see her coming out of some car in these tight ass little shorts, talking fast, telling me she's about to leave me. I grab her by the neck and start punching her. She wanted to be all big and bad, trying to face me like a grown ass woman. She gonna get beat like a grown woman. She started screaming, cursing at me, and carrying on. I threw her in the closet for a couple of days. She kept on screaming, begging to be let out, begging for water. Every time she made too much noise, I'd walk in and kick her. Jasper wasn't even my boyfriend, just this dude I did some hacking with once in a while. He was pretty basic library systems, low security shit. 
Not in my league at all, but he had a big dick, and sometimes a girl just needs a big dick. I tiptoed toward the door, peering through the window at the boy, his pants around his ankles squeezed between April's straddled legs as she lay on top of a teacher's desk. I gripped his arms and flipped him around, pushing him against the wall. His eyes widened, mouth dropping. Hey, what are you doing? He chuckled nervously. I took a deep breath before dropping on my shaky knees, the ground cold. Me and Monday, we did something. We did do something. He took a deep breath. She sucked my dick. I really didn't want it to happen. It just kind of did. Her top lip curled up. Wait a minute. Is that what's really going on? She did your homework and you ate her coochie? Is that why you're crying? Because Monday's not around to do your homework no more. I kept dancing, lost in the music, until some boy pushed me up behind me, holding my hips, and I froze. Looking to Megan for help, she nodded and mouthed, It's okay. It's cool. This is what girls do at parties. I told myself and kept dancing with the boy. I couldn't see the alcohol making my w waist wind faster. I already heard a lot of the ladies from my group. They talked about fucking, they talked about dick sucking, they talked about coochie licking. By show of hands, does anyone up here want to talk about that stuff now? Not a single hand, because it's very uncomfortable and we're in a room full of adults. Nobody outside, nobody inside wants to talk about it because they're not acceptable topics. How did we get these un unacceptable topics? Well, one, you didn't follow your procurement policies when you bought $1.8 million worth of these trash books. If you had followed your procurement policies, then you would have done a curriculum review where I hope and pray that at least the majority of you would have said, no, we can't read this trash to our kids. Your own code of conduct says that this is sexual harassment. We know it because all of us would be fired from our day jobs if we said this crap at work. This is the definition of a hostile work environment. My kids don't go to your crap schools, but theirs do, and they are filing these harassment suits on their behalf. Thank you for not doing your jobs. Any of you think that that's appropriate? Any of you think that that's appropriate? Uh, freshman honors English. These are different schools, but it's freshman honors English. Loudoun County Public Schools. Something wrong here? Uh, how is this even possible? It is quite obviously demeaning, degrading, demoralizing, and that is the indoctrination that is taking place. This is child abuse. So, much to my surprise, I see this. Unbelievable. Our Kickstarter for what's an abortion anyway? What's an abortion anyway? It was fully funded in less than 35 hours. We are sending a free copy to every uh, PPFA, and I'm not sure what that is. Well, let's see. Oh, Planned Parenthood. Of course. Um, order your own copy. What's an abortion anyway? Listen to this. We have very, I'm sorry, um, very sick adults. This is for little children. Hi, my name is M. My pronouns are they, them. I'm an illustrator and a full-spectrum doula. My name is Carly. My pronouns are she, her, and I am also a full-spectrum doula. And together we created... What's an Abortion Anyway? What's an Abortion Anyway is a medically accurate, gender-inclusive, non-judgmental book about abortion for children. What we deem as age-appropriate or appropriate topic for kids is topics that we feel comfortable talking about. If we believe in talking to kids about pregnancy and we believe in talking to kids about loss and we believe in talking to kids about 
miscarriage, then why wouldn't we talk to them about abortion? This book is also really special because it's not an advocacy tool for policy. We give information that is medically accurate, non-judgmental, and gender inclusive. It is made so that anyone can see their abortion story or their abortion experience reflected in this book. I remember the moment you told me about the bug. I immediately got excited because I definitely feel a sense of affirmation and care when I read children's books, specifically children's books that are non-judgmental and are meant to teach you to love your body and love yourself and accept yourself and meet people where they're at. Most of the images in this book are real people who have had abortions, who all have had unique and different experiences, and we love that we got to highlight them in this way by featuring them in our book. I thought that this book wouldn't reach as wide of an audience if we didn't use a formal publisher. But M really inspired me that if we did this via Kickstarter and really grounded in our community support of the book, that that aligned with our values more than anything, that our community needs this resource and they're gonna help us make it possible. And this is where you all come in. So if you believe in this book and believe in what it represents, back this book. You can check us out on Instagram at what's an abortion book and online at www.what. Um, it's a children's book. You Do you hear the pathological narcissism of these two women who are adults? If we can talk about it, then we thought that it was appropriate for our community to also, the children, to talk about, they think it's appropriate to talk about miscarriage and all of this stuff with children. Something is very wrong with our society now. Very wrong. And for those who still think, hey, you know, well, it might just be in that community. This is going all over the world. All over the world. This is global. It's the global takedown of sovereign states. Yeah. It's the reimagining, rethinking, reopening schools. You know, uh, when COVID hit, it was the new normal. Reimagining cities, we heard from Cuomo. Reimagine, that's the great reset word. Reimagine everything. Everything is changing in not a good way, in a very evil way. It is global. You know, we have Education Reimagine with all of these people on the advisory board. Uh, we have Randy Weingarten, who is the president of the American Federation of Teachers. Mm. Uh, the most powerful and biggest teacher union in the country, is that Am I right about that? Yeah, okay. So why is she partnering up with all of these uh, principal from New York City Public School, uh, but also uh, superintendent of schools in Honduras? Honduras, with the MacArthur Foundation? Uh, Nebraska teacher? teacher in residence, all of these people on the advisory board, corporations, uh, seems a little odd. Samsung Electronics, a former Virginia State Board of Education member. Ah, Loudoun County is in Virginia. John Hopkins, general manager of global education. Okay. Um, the, the, the life we had not too long ago when parents and school board members actually did control what was happening in their public schools is gone. It's gone. Because it, this is going global. Um, Randy Weingarten is one powerful woman and 
has an awful lot of power over the Democratic Party. Mm. So, top U.S. education foundations that give education grants, the Resilient Educator, Annenberg Foundation, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, of course, American Honda Foundation, the NEA Foundation, uh, Bill and Melinda Gates, wow, well, they give an awful lot of money. Now, when these foundations are giving money, don't you think they have a say in what kind of education is going to be implemented, what kind of curricula? But it is global. This is global transforming education. Raise your hand. Global Education Summit. Okay. All of this is taking place, you know, behind the scenes. It is an ongoing affair. They have reimagined um, health care. They have reimagined cities. They've got reimagined education. They have reimagined governance. Oh, well, they also want to re educate parents, re educate parents on integration to open opportunities to all kids, we must confront adults' ingrained bias. Yeah, they do want to re-educate all of us. And this is, well, now the head of the, the secretary of our Department of Education, Richard Garanza. He was school's chancellor in New York, but was it New York? He's now Secretary of Education. That's who they appointed. They're appointing all of the puppets to implement their own agenda. Their leftist, communist, Marxist, evil agenda. And these kids well, don't have a chance because the majority of adults are not protecting them. So Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation bankrolls math is racist lunacy because they're lunatics, okay? This guy bankrolling the whole math is racist and it's not objective anymore. It, it Math is no longer objective. You know, it's about feelings. What, what do you feel the answer is? Bill Gates makes big push on education reform. $200 million a year on grants to elementary and secondary education. Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation commits $335 million to promote effective teaching and raise student achievement. Well, no, it's lower student achievement. If you look into it, you'll see. They're getting rid of advanced classes in public schools. Uh, Loudoun County, I believe, got rid of advanced math classes. They're getting rid of the college entrance exams like the SAT. So equity means bringing everybody down to the same level. That's the equity part. Every, they're focused on outcomes. So if you can't raise all of the students up, and I was one of them, you could not in elementary school or junior high, high school, you could not raise me up to get me into an advanced class. So if you wanted equal outcomes, equitable outcomes, you have to pull all of those students in those advanced classes down. That's what's happening. Do you want to talk? It is such a disgrace that adults are doing this, but Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation is a big player. I got money. 
I'll give you this money if you do this. And that's how it works. And, well, uh, a whole lot of people think that people in education care about children. They don't. They do care about money. So, you know, 335 million and 200 million and 20 million, a grant program here and there and everywhere. And that's how he gets to be a big player in education. He was also the Common Core guy, right? How did Common Core get passed in all of these states so quickly? I'll give you money. Okay. He gives away. Now, this is a site that I had bookmarked and had actually bookmarked for years. I don't know the date of all of this information. I can't find an update. I had this brilliant piece. It was an investigation, and I cannot remember the author. It was so brilliant going into all of these foundations, and it was more updated than this. I cannot find it anywhere on my bookmarks, my bookmark uh, folder. Very upsetting, but this gives you a very good idea of what's happening. So, yeah, the Gates Foundation gives away over a billion dollars each year, mainly in education. So it is particularly influential in education policy. Oh, Billy is all over the place, isn't he? Increasingly, it is funding groups promoting particular types of school reform, what the foundation calls advocacy work. And he also gives out an awful lot to advocacy organizations, NGOs, the army that just is, it's a web, you know, an intricate web of armies all over the place, operatives working this agenda. Since 1999, the Gates Foundation has spent approximately $3.4 billion on an array of measures to try to improve K-12 through public education with mixed results. Many of his uh, programs that he wanted adopted failed, but it's Billy, so he's got money, and he's always a player. Spent $650 million replacing large urban high schools with smaller schools, but abandoned that project when the results were disappointing. All right. Uh, there are so many people involved in this. Tom Vander Ark, head of the education section of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation in 2006 said that uh, the Gates Foundation envisions a system in which public authorities oversee schools but do not run them. And Gates Foundation money is directed towards projects that fit that vision. So let's say that you have these public authorities Oh, elected school board members, but they're just overseeing. They're actually not running them. They're not, they're just the yes men and women to those who are implementing this very sick, satanic agenda. Foundation, Gates Foundation fronts groups, funds front groups, such as Teach Plus to oppose unions, funds the major teachers' unions. He's given an awful lot to teachers' unions, including Randy Weingarten's. Mr. Gate is creating entirely new advocacy groups. The foundation is also paying Harvard-trained data specialists to work inside school districts not only to crunch numbers, but also to change practices. It is bankrolling many of the Washington analysts who interpret education issues for journalists and giving grants to some media organizations. Yay! 
So, media organizations, they too, Billy just funds everybody. ABC, NBC, CNN, MSNBC. Oh, we love Common Core. Oh, there's nothing wrong with critical race theory. The foundation paid a New York uh, philanthropic advisor firm $3.5 million to mount and support public education and advocacy com campaigns. It also paid a string of universities to support pieces of the Gates agenda. Harvard, for instance, got $3.5 million to place, quote, strategic data fellows, unquote, who could act as, quote, entrepreneurial change agents, unquote, in school districts in Boston, Los Angeles, and elsewhere. Sue Peters, a parent and co-founder of the local chapter of Parents Across America, pointed out that, quote, nobody elected Bill Gates to run our schools, and yet his money is driving so many policies and so many of these reforms so that parents' voices are drowned out because we don't have the dollars behind us. Gates Foundation donated $125 million to New York schools to reform schools so as to bring a, quote, CEO mentality to education. We're converting the role of the principal into a CEO role. A major funder, the Gates Foundation, a major funder of the National Center on Education and the Economy, which set up the new commission on the skills of the American workforce. It funded a report by the commission that called for schools to be run by independent private contractors rather than school districts. Uh, and I'm skipping over a lot, but this man has, wow, put a lot of money into educating our kids. Why? Because he loves them, right? No. He has thrown his support behind the idea that America has too many bad teachers and he is pouring billions into the hunt for bad teachers. Thrown a few million to the teachers' unions to gain their assent. Gates has gotten the federal government to join him in his current belief that what matters most is creating teacher evaluation systems tied to student test scores Gates seems not to know or care that the leading testing experts in the nation agree that this is a fruitless and wrong-headed way to identify either good or bad teachers. Gates Foundation and the Brood or Broad, but I think it might be Brood Foundation teamed up in 2007 for a $60 million Dollar strong American schools campaign to ensure that education was a strong election issue and to promote strong curriculum standards, standardized testing, and merit-based pay for teachers. In New York, Bill Gates personally funded $4 million to Learn New York, a group which campaigned to enable Michael Bloomberg to be elected for a third term so that he could continue to push the Gates educational reforms in New York City. Uh, 2009, the Gates Foundation teamed up with Viacom, one of the world's largest media conglomerates, to form Get Schooled, which enables Gates personnel to have input into television programs such as ER, Law and Order, SVU, and private practice, and also the creation of new programs to advance the cause of business-directed educational and health reform. Boy, why did Common Core get rid of a lot of the classics, literature, and then actually handed government manuals to the kids to read. It could be called message placement. 
what the, the hookup of Gates and Viacom, message placement, the social or philanthropic corollary to product placement deals in where marketers play, pay to feature their products and shows. Gates Foundation is about social and social engineering, social justice. That's his product for education. One of Get Schooled initiatives is the movie Waiting for Superman, which, uh, which was sponsored by the Gates and Broad Foundations. It is, according to Nation Magazine, a documentary that celebrates the charter school movement while blaming teachers' unions for much of what ails American education. Well, what ails this entire country, every industry, is greed and money trumping every, everything else. Secretary of Education Arne Duncan, ah, Obama's Secretary of Education, incorporated the prescriptions of the Gates-funded turnaround channel, cha challenge into federal policy and referred to it as the Bible for school restructuring. The Gates Foundation also funded the New Teacher Project, which produced an influential report in 2009 repeatedly cited by U.S. Secretary of Education Arne Duncan that was critical of teacher evaluations that consistently gave teachers high evaluations. Okay, Gates, you know, working with the Department of Education, Gates funding reports and studies, and Lo and behold, the results come out and make Gates smile. <laughs> oh, my God. Other Gates-funded nonprofit groups then advocated new systems of teacher evaluation re resulting in their redesign in some 20 states. The new appointments in the Department of Education, following the revolving door principle, Duncan's first chief of staff from the Gates Foundation, Margot Rogers. Duncan's second chief of staff, Joanne Weiss, came from a major Gates grantee, the New Schools Venture Fund. The assistant secretary for civil rights, uh, Ruslan Ali, he worked at the Broad or Brood Foundation. Um, also, the Gates Funded Education Trust. General Counsel Charles Rose was a founding uh, board member of Major Gates Grantee Advanced Illinois. Okay. And Arne Duncan, Secretary of Education, served on the board of directors of the Broods Education Division. Now I'm going to put you on hold because I want to find out the exact pronunciation of that. Hang on. Okay, it's Broad, and I apologize. Yeah, Arnie Duncan, <laughs> Board of Directors of Broad's Education Division. Well, um, I am going to, I guess, do a part three because reading all of this is tiring. So, the Gates Foundation played a key role in the introduction of Common Core standards in the United States. Not only did it fund the development of the standards, but it campaigned for their adoption across the U.S. using a $200 million budget to buy political and other support. It has been described as, quote, uh, one of the swiftest and most remarkable shifts in education policy in U.S. history. The Gates Foundation spread money across the political spectrum to entities including the big teachers' unions, the American Federation of Teachers, and the National Education Association, and business organizations such as the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, a Thomas 
be Fordham Institute study of the standards funded with almost a million dollars of Gates Foundation money endorsed the standards. However, the renowned, highly respected um, persons in education said the standards were abysmal, math and English. I can't remember their names, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, the standards are very, very strong and superior to most existing state standards. Abject lie, money, money, money. The Obama administration, populated as it was with Gates personnel, wholeheartedly embraced the common standards. See, common, core, common, common. Make everybody common. Common standards. And within two years of the initiation of the Gates campaign, 45 states had adopted Common Core. The movement grew so quickly and with so little public notice that opposition was essentially almost non-existent. And even as opposition grew, it was overwhelmed by Gates-funded advocates. They're doing the same thing with critical race theory. Gates has said that one of the benefits of common standards would be to open the classroom to digital learning. Oh, making it easier for software developers, including Microsoft. Oh, Gates profits from everything, uh, everything that he pushes. Yeah. Microsoft to develop new products for the country's 15,000 school districts in February. Uh, well, Microsoft announced that it was joining Pearson, the world's largest educational publish publisher, to load Pearson's Common Core classroom materials on none other than Microsoft's tablet, the Surface. That product allows Microsoft to compete for school district spending with Apple, whose iPad is the dominant tablet in classrooms. In Kentucky, the first state to adopt Common Core standards, the Kentucky Chamber of Commerce's foundation received just under half a million from the Gates Foundation. With this grant, it produced a seven-minute video about the value and impact of the Common Core, a toolkit to guide employers in how to talk about its benefits with their employees, a list of key facts that could be stuffed into paycheck envelopes, and other promotional materials written by consultants. Money, it was money. Everything's money in, in our country. Everything is money. Sorry. You know, very few actually live the principles they speak. The chamber also recruited a prominent Louisville stockbroker to head a coalition of 75 company executives across the state who lent their names to ads placed in business publications that supported the Common Core. The Hunt Institute uh, at the University of North Carolina, headed by former Governor Jim Hunt, received $5 million from the Gates Foundation and coordinated the campaigning of several organizations and teachers' unions, as well as the National Governors Association. The Institute also distributed a toolkit with sample letters to the editor and customizable opinion pieces. It hired a public relations firm, GMMB. Um, Gates Foundation funds many advocacy groups and think tanks and here's a whole list of them this is really brookings institute american enterprise institute the education trust achieve and its american diploma project network and alliance for excellent education center on policy education education equality project education sector um, Bellwether Education Partners, 
National Council on Teacher Quality, Rockefeller, Philanthropy Advisors, Teach Plus, Thomas Fordham Institute. Great, isn't it? So, yes, there are many organizations, many, once I read the, the broad foundation, you will see how these foundations, they create their own training for people and then they place them in power positions all throughout the country, administrators, on school boards to do the Broad and Gates Foundation's bidding. So this will be part three. But check this site out because it has an awful lot of information and even if that information is not current today, you can trust this is going on. Absolutely. 100% when you see all of the organizations involved in making sure that critical race theory gets implemented. Who funds those organizations? Who funds the advocacy groups? The people with the money.